Well, one of the rules of comedy is that uh, I'm supposed to tell jokes that the audience can relate to. Uh, so I guess uh, tonight I'll start by talking about white privilege. <laughs> Specifically, how it's coming to an end. Uh, I'm a huge politics nerd. I, I read studies a lot, and according to a recent one, three years ago in 2012 was the first time that there were more ethnic babies born in North America than real babies. <laughs> I just found that study to be racist, and that's what it was really saying. Um, but yeah, more ethnic babies born than Caucasian babies. That was three years ago. That means in the next 15 years, when they all turn 18, white people will be the new minority. So uh, I figured you guys don't know what it's like. In fact, the last time you were a minority in North America, you didn't react so well. So I'm here to ease the transition, so to speak. I'm here to introduce you to the new rules of living life. Uh, now that you are a minority, it's just, you know, taken from personal experience, so just hear me out. Uh, let me know what you think. Actually, you know what? Your opinion doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> so, just shut the fuck up and listen and obey. <laughs> Internalize this. First, <laughs> first rule, now that white people are a minority, from now on, no more cultural appropriation. That shit is illegal. Full stop. No more blackface. Uh, no more dressing up as a native princess, doesn't matter if it's Halloween or, you know, Tuesday in Alberta. <laughs> We're not going to tolerate that anymore. <laughs> Exception, white girls can still do yoga. That's fine. <laughs> in, in fact, it will be mandatory. <laughs> Rule number two, now that white people are a minority, um, we're going to change up the military. We need to make some changes to the military. We need more discipline overall. You know, take these B-plus losers, turn, turn them into A-plus soldiers. So from now on, all leadership positions in the military will be held by Asian parents. <laughs> and to avoid torture scandals, all prisoners of war will be interrogated by Jewish moms. <laughs> There's uh, no Geneva Convention against that. <laughs> Lastly, now that white people are a minority, from now on, all large gatherings of Caucasian youth will be considered suspicious and immediately investigated. We don't care if you're just camping. <laughs> You're out in the woods, alone with flammable materials. To the rest of us, looks like a terrorist training camp. Are you sure that's how ISIS started? That shit around. So, uh, it's not just white people who are racist, it's actually everybody. Um, it's, just, it's just this thing called implicit bias, right? Uh, no matter who you are, young, old, gay, straight, left wing, right wing, whatever. Everybody makes an assumption about each other based on your external appearance. We just do that, that's how we navigate the world. Uh, for example, uh, when we hear about yet another shooting uh, in the poor part of town, everybody automatically assumes that the killer was probably a police officer. Right? <laughs> So, as, as a visible minority, you know, people make assumptions about me as well, you know, based on a look. And it changes depending on the context, actually. These things have evolved over time. So I'll give you an example. Like, I'm a comedian, so obviously, you know, I take the bus a lot. So, I, and, and a lot of times, people smell weed on the bus. And, they look around, they see me, and everybody instantly assumes it's coming from me, right? I can see the mental math going on in their head. They're like, well, I've seen the Harold and Kumar trilogy. <laughs> brown guys, brown guys love weed. It's probably him. And it's probably me, because I have a joint on me like 99% of the time. <laughs> But the point is, you're not supposed to come to that conclusion. That's what implicit bias is, right? However, I noticed that uh, people don't make that connection if there's one small detail that's different, right? Uh, I can get away with it 
if I'm standing next to a black guy. <laughs> uh, and you're laughing because you come to the same conclusion that everybody else does. Even if he's better dressed than me, everybody assumes that he's the one with the marijuana, right? Doesn't matter if he's a banker and I look like the world's biggest pothead. Somehow that works in my favor. Because now people look at me and they're like, well, that brown guy's eyes are really red. I can barely keep them open. Food stains on his clothes. He was probably up all night studying for med school. <laughs> Hope he doesn't get corrupted by Kwame over there. So <laughs> Implicit bias, you guys. That's how it works. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I'm a huge politics nerd. And I read this study, uh, a legit one. This was conducted by a lot of Ivy League universities in the States. And they said that in some women, the birth control pill changes their taste in men. Right? So, like, I don't know if anybody here wants to admit to that. Uh, but apparently what happens is, let's say you're normally into like tall, muscular lumberjack types. You go on the pill and suddenly, poof, it's just a lactose intolerant, gluten-free vegans all day. So, so it does something uh, chemically. I didn't really read too much into it. I'm just like, alright, nice headline, funny joke, move on with my life. So, like, I read that, and like a few days later, I was at a bar, I was trying to talk to this girl, and I was trying to get her number, and she's like, you know what, don't worry about it, she was resisting, I'm like, you know, just get to know me, whatever, you'll like me. So finally, she's like, don't worry about it, you're not my type. So I'm like, well, I know of a pill that will change your mind. So, so apparently, uh, she had not read the study. <laughs> I thought I was being clever. Uh, she thought I was the world's most incompetent date rapist. <laughs> so they got my plans in front of her. <laughs>